Hello everyone and welcome back to W13 Universe. I am Jitch and you are watching TLC 2011, the final pay-per-view of 2011 and the third ever TLC pay-per-view to take place within the series. This match has been promoted to a TLC match, and just two days ago, Drew McIntyre felt the wrath of the beast, the World Heavyweight Champion, Brock Lesnar. I think he's maybe a little more interested in pursuing the US title now, with all due respect to Drew McIntyre. At least he doesn't have to deal with Brock Lesnar. But obviously I can't read minds, I don't know what Drew McIntyre is thinking, I don't know where his priorities lie. I can only go off of assumptions, and I'd assume that he doesn't want anything to do with the current World Heavyweight Champion right now. Well, the winner of this match will get a United States Championship opportunity at uh, the first pay-per-view of the new year 2012 Royal Rumble. Of course, uh, as is usually the case, that does not mean that they will not be in the Royal Rumble match itself later on in the night. It simply means that uh, they will be getting a US Championship shot first and foremost. So if you're worried that that means your favorite maybe won't be in the Royal Rumble, well, they will still be, if it is one of these two anyway. Or well, they could still be. I can't, I can't really say they will be. There's no telling who's going to be in the Royal Rumble. The only thing we know about the Royal Rumble next year is that Triple H is entering at number 40, and The Rock will also be in the Royal Rumble. But here we go, kicking things off real hot tonight with a TLC match. The only non-title match of the show, but it is for a championship opportunity. And these are two very, very hungry faces here on SmackDown. They are faces that they just want to fill. <laughs> that was awful. Tables, ladders, and chairs surround the ring. This is one of two matches where you will see this match type here tonight. Uh, as uh, the second match will be coming m much, much later in the show. The WWE Tag Team Championships are on the line. The longest reigning WWE Tag Team Champions of all time, Edge and Christian, will be getting their rematch tonight against the Road Warriors. I can't wait to see which team ends up winning the, the big one tonight, that rematch. And of course, let's not forget, the Road Warriors have said if they lose tonight, they're done. And that goes for any time they lose those tag team titles. As soon as they drop them, they say they are finished. Drew McIntyre, of course, uh, if he wins tonight, will be getting a rematch for his his prized possession, the United States Championship. Drew McIntyre uh, held the record of, I believe, almost a year, just on 300 days on the dot, I think, as United States Champion before dropping that title. Many, many successful defenses. Uh, really one of the best who have ever held the title. Whilst uh, Dolph Ziggler had a very short-lived United States Championship run, which uh, saw him have to drop the title due to injuries. So uh, these two, I think, both have a little bit of significance when it comes to the United States Championship. Nice clothesline there by Drew McIntyre. Of course, the U.S. Championship ooh, will be determined later on tonight. Between, oh, nice reversal of those, between uh, Damian Sandow and Rey Mysterio. That should be a real good ladder match. Definitely a lot of people feeling that match plays into the favor of Rey Mysterio, despite the Sandow having the better ladder match record. Oh, there you go. And that is exactly how you can see these weapons come in handy. Oh, God. And it's not going to be a very easy one for either of these. <laughs> Two superstars. Ziggler controlling the head. And it could be a real bad one for Drew. Oh! Well, thankfully, I think he just kind of kind of bounced off of the table there. That could have been far worse. 
you know, a far worse for a possibility. And there's the ladder. Dolph setting up a table inside the ring. Oh, Drew crashing that ladder into the face of Dolph Ziggler. Oh, and and it looks like Drew has got his eyes on the prize, perhaps. Ow, at least in the, the sense that he is factoring that, cha that uh, ladder into the match. He's got evil Dolph. What's he doing here? He's Dolph, I think you're giving Drew a little too much time on the corner, though. And Drew is up. Oh, do wait, no, Dolph managed to get there in time. This could be uh, seriously problematic for Drew McIntyre as he suplexed. Oh my god, it didn't even break. <laughs> Sometimes I think that's a little worse, you know? That ch that table not breaking uh, means that we can very much see a bone break instead. He's getting the best of Drew McIntyre right now. He kips up. I don't know what that noise is. Drew McIntyre taking the ladder out of Dolph Ziggler's hands. Back and forth between these two. Two people that I think a lot of people feel are future world champions in their own right. This could one day be a main event on pay-per-view, you never know. Dolph, I mean, hang on a minute. There's a ladder there, Dolph. I mean, I think he's pretty aware. Oh, oh no. Oh no, oh my god. Oh, oh, okay, wow, that was like, oh, 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 oh. We won't talk about what we just saw there. As, uh, Dolph Ziggler is the first to ascend the ladder and he has got his hands on that championship shot briefcase and uh, Drew McIntyre ripping the ladder out from underneath him. <clears throat> the worst was to get to come there, that power bomb. Dolph Ziggler's neck just whipped off the mat. We got a lot of championships to be hung high above the ring here tonight. The Divas Championship will be contested in a four-woman ladder match. Uh, we also know that uh, the um, Tag Team Championship, as I mentioned before, will be in a TLC match. And, of course, uh, the US Championship will also be in a ladder match. Four of our seven matches tonight will be contested in ladder matches. Ooh! Well... That's definitely, I think, more of a preferable way you want to go through one of those, though. And Dolph utilizing every part of the TLC match. Drew McIntyre is out. And Dolph, what are you doing? Dolph, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, okay. Well, I respect that for what it was. And a zigzag. Dolph Ziggler ascends the ladder. Drew McIntyre used the ropes for leverage to get to his feet, but he doesn't seem to realize what's going on inside the ring. McIntyre's got to get in there. He's got to do something about this. And it's too little too late. I always forget how anticlimactic the ladder matches end up being in these games. Well, Dolph Ziggler is the number one contender for the United States Championship coming out of that one. I think Drew McIntyre definitely wasn't 100% going into this matchup. I think the match with Brock Lesnar may have really taken its toll on Drew just two days before tonight. Still, I think it was a pretty decent showing from Drew, but Dolph utilizing ladders and tables to the best of his ability. He has captured a shot at the United States Championship and will meet either Damian Sandow or Rey Mysterio in six weeks' time at the Royal Rumble. Is 
Well, perhaps one of the most popular guys in the entire WWE right now, the Cruiserweight Champion Heath Slater is set to defend his championship here tonight against a SmackDown superstar. It was determined two days ago on SmackDown that Primo would be the one getting a shot. And so here we go. He defeated Scotty Too Hardy to earn this opportunity for tonight. Primo. I think this should be a pretty good matchup. Obviously, the table stipulation is a bit of a, a tough one, I'm not going to lie. I always feel like um, I give props to those that can kind of put on a show stealing classic in a table match. It's not to say that I think table matches are bad, but I do feel like they can be. Uh, the, the thing about a table match that's always looming overhead is just how suddenly one of these matches can end. Because you really don't know when a table match is over, and then it's over. It's just the snap of a finger, the blink of an eye, the match is done. And that could very well be what goes down here tonight between Primo and Heath Slater. I only wish uh, Heath Slater the best of luck in the sense that uh, he is in his second reign as Cruiserweight Champion. After dropping the championship to Ted DiBiase, he ended up recapturing it, which I was real happy for. And I'd hate to see him lose it so quickly once again, but with that being said, I do feel like Primo would be a pretty great Cruiserweight Champion, so I think we're in a bit of a win-win situation here. Of course, the next time this championship will be defended on pay-per-view is the Royal Rumble. The Cruiserweight Championship are going to be a staple of these pay-per-views from them to understand. As Ooh, big fist on the face of Primo. Of course, we always put every title on the line from the respective brand on pay-per-view. And that will be no different. Of course, with uh, the Royal Rumble being a joint brand pay view, actually, there is a chance we won't be seeing the European Cruiserweight Championships in the line there. There'll always be room for the Divas, though, don't you worry about that. Well, I feel like this is, as I say, this has got the potential to be a real good match. And of course, Heath Slater is notoriously known as uh, Mr. Pay Per View. Every time he comes out on Pay Per View, he always ends up having a bit of a show stealing contest with whoever he's put in the ring with, win or lose. I think that'll be no different here tonight. I think you can expect a really good match between these two, to be completely honest. Following this match, the Divas Championship on the line in a four-way ladder match, one of the most stacked matches we've got here tonight. Three women getting their shot at the Divas Champion leader, all in one, and they don't even have to pin or submit her to win that title. <laughs> Sorry. As I said before, AJ Lee very upset that she is not involved in that Divas Championship match. So she's far better than the likes of uh, Layla or Trish Stratus and should be considered for a shot. I think she could even beat Tiny Shiny if given the opportunity. And I think uh, Primo is going to be very grateful he didn't get knocked off the apron there as there's a table right behind him. And it really can be that simple. You fall off that apron, you fall through a table, this one's over. The only way in which you can't lose this match and go through a table is if, say, uh, you were to do a dive off the top rope to break someone through a table they were maybe laid out on, and uh, they move and you go through the table. That does not count as a loss for you, as they, your opponent did not put you through that table. You put yourself through that table. I have a feeling that voice in my head is correct. I sometimes you guys seem to be able to hear them too, by the way. That's really cool. I, uh, I really thought uh, that was just me, but it turns out everybody can hear the voices in my head. Oh, man, what a neck breaker. was very close by to the table there. We've got one more table match coming your way later on tonight. The European Championship to be determined between Tensai, the challenger, and the defending champion, Yoshitatsu. And I do wish Yoshitatsu the best of luck. But I am a little bit nervous for his own safety in that situation. Oh, Primo. Speaking of people, I'm nervous for the safety of Primo. Ooh, smart move to get off of that immediately. That was just unadulterated power. Oh, he sends him gut first into the table. That's going to really hurt. Primo really uh, fixating on the, the objective here. He really wants to end this one quickly and effectively. 
I, I, I can't fault the guy for that. That could have been it right there. That's exactly what I mean. Primo went through the table. Primo went through the table by his own accord. He put himself through the table. And therefore, that is not the end of the match. Primo laid out on the apron. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. I don't know if that would have counted or not, to be honest. I mean, uh, Slater went into the table because of Primo. That could have done. And Oh. Luckily, the uh, floor are pretty slippery on there, so uh, that table just happened to move out of the way. Slater, ooh, flat jack on the outside. Slater now setting up a table inside the ring, and of course that is the objective in this match, so uh, can't fault the guy for trying. I was like, Primo is going to be doing the same, and Slater is just going to let it happen. Oh wait, no, it's Slater, oh! And, uh, the ground is fairly covered right now, there's, there's not a lot of breathing space in that ring. And I mean, that's great! Always room for the sweetness, but that does nothing in this situation for Heath Slater. Oh my god! Saw the uh, broken table fly in the air there, and for a moment I thought that was a broken table, uh, well, a table being broken is what I meant to say. Primo with his eyes on the prize once again, he's got Slater set up on that table. This could be a big moment for Primo. Oh no, oh no, oh, oh. Slater has really just about managed to time his recovery right in this situation. I feel like he's he's come close to losing this a few times now. Where is Primo going? Hear it! Smart move by Primo. But he kind of uh, got a little bit distracted there by something. Oh, here we go again, Primo, setting Slater up on the table. He, as I say, eyes on the prize at all times for Primo. And, oh, once again, crashed and burned through the table. Well, that could be a real dangerous positioning for that table. You could be looking at the end right there. Table set up in the corner by Heath Slater as he goes to grab yet another table. And of course, yes, this table in front of us, uh, well, in front of those guys, I'm not actually there. Uh, that is also a valid table to end this matchup. Heath Slater waiting inside the ring. He's not wasting, well, I mean, he is wasting time right now, actually. I don't know why I said he's not wasting time. That's exactly what he is doing. We've seen a couple tables break in this match, but none of them have been a decisive table break. He Slater, got to look out here. Ooh, <laughs> that's exactly what I mean. Poor Primo, he's just gone through so many. I don't give him credit where credit is due. He is, he is chugging on in this fight. And this is really breaking down into a fight. Cruiserweight champion. Uh-oh. 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 Ooh, that's it. That's all she wrote for this one. As I said, it can be quick, it can be sudden, and it can be decisive. And that's exactly what that table break there was. Well, if you like Carnage... So that is a good taste of what is to come here tonight at TLC. A lot of broken tables in this matchup. And one very decisive winner. Heath Slater, still your Cruiserweight Champion, coming out of this match here tonight. Another table match to come later on tonight, as I said before, for the European Championship. But up next, the Divas Championship is to be decided. Four Divas enter. The Divas Championship hung high above the ring. Let's get this one going.
is for the Divas Championship. Making her way to the ring. From Sanford, North Carolina, she is the WWE Divas Champion, Lita. Well, Lita has been on a roll as of late. She is the current reigning Divas Champion. She has seen the end of the Beth Phoenix and Karma era come to us when she defeated Beth Phoenix. Obviously, Beth Phoenix retiring Karma and <clears throat> Beth Phoenix stepping down after Lita defeated Phoenix. That is truly the end of an era for the women of the WWE, but now we look towards this current era. There's been a lot of grumbling about how Trish Stratus hasn't really done a whole lot to uh, earn this championship or opportunity here tonight. I guess we'll uh, have to wait and see. Obviously, this past Friday on SmackDown, I believe it was, she lost by a counter to Tiny Shiny, but it was just that. It was counter. It was not pinfall. It was not submission. She didn't lose the match, in my opinion. She just didn't win the match. And of course, there is Layla, who uh, again has never actually held championship gold. I feel like it's always just kind of been that little bit out of reach for her. But I will say, I think this could be a, a big night for Layla. I think she could maybe even win the deepest championship tonight. The thing about it being held over the ring is, uh, as I said before, you don't have to defeat Layla to win Layla's championship. I'm not saying that the, you know the women in this match can't beat Lita, but I'm saying that it does kind of make it that little bit easier in a way for them. Like, it's harder in a way, because they've got to be able to, you know, find the right opportunity to climb the ladder and retrieve the championship. I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm saying that it's easier than maybe facing Lita one-on-one -on -one would be. There's one more entrant left to come out in this matchup. Third match here tonight at TLC. So far, we've got a... So far we've got a new contender for the United States Championship decided. Dolph Ziggler will meet whoever wins the US Championship match coming later on tonight uh, at the Royal Rumble. That should be a real good matchup. I have a feeling Dolph Ziggler has perhaps got championship gold in his future, his very near future. And maybe 2012 will be a great year for Dolph Ziggler, but I guess only time will tell. I don't want to get too carried away with my predictions here. There's still plenty that could uh, go down in between. I mean, we don't even know who the United States Champion is going to be at the Royal Rumble right now. Damien Sandow and Rey Mysterio still getting ready for that matchup to come, which I believe is actually uh, up next. So we're going to be uh, going from ladder match to ladder match right now. Two table matches tonight. Two ladder matches tonight. Two TLC matches and one Extreme Rules match, or anything goes. I think it's very fitting that Sheamus and Brock Lesnar, a year after Brock Lesnar surprise defeated Sheamus for the World Heavyweight Championship at the 2010 TLC, are having their rematch here tonight. A match that we never actually saw take place between Sheamus and Brock Lesnar. We'll see if Sheamus can take down the. Uh, the man that took his title a year ago. I know it ain't going to be easy. <clears throat> Someone's got to stop Brock Lesnar. It's crazy to think that could be uh, Sheamus that we're, we're rooting on there. I don't know who this we is. I think there are actually some people that are uh, very much in support of Brock Lesnar as World Heavyweight Champion. I, for one, think that... Uh, I think that it started off right. I think that this Kimura lock business has just gone a bit out of hand. Silver. And this is going to be a real hard one to keep track of, let me remind you. Four women in one match. Championship hanging high above the ring. They are going to be laying it all on the line, though. I can guarantee you that. 
The thing about Atlanta match is this could end in a heartbeat. It's, it's very similar to the table match. Like right now, it feels like, you know, it's a million miles away because it's hung above that ring and someone's going to be able to get to it. But the thing is, it could happen in a moment. You think about what Dolph Ziggler really did against Drew McIntyre. That could happen in an instant. Anytime. I feel like the Divas have really got a nice spotlight lately, having a featured match on Raw, SmackDown, and Superstars. I feel like we're getting a much better taste of the Divas division's capabilities. I say, I think uh, the, the, the removal of the brand division really benefited two women, of course, Brie and Nikki Bella, twin sisters who are reunited and can team up on any brand they want. They mind that one bit. So uh, action is a little bit hard to call, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna kind of be speaking a little bit more generally until we know for a fact that what is going on in that ring, until we know for a fact that the championship is within reach of someone. It's crazy to me to think that with a TLC tag team championship match is coming so close. I feel like that almost deserves the main event spot tonight, if not for the, the year-long wait that will finally be fulfilled between Brock Lesnar and Sheamus. It's a tough one to decide which one would have been the main event between those two, but I think Mr. Laurinaitis made the right call. Divas champion leader, from what I've been able to pick up, has been uh, really uh, all over the opposition in this match. Say that this year immediately gets laid out, of course. What else is new? Trish Stratus, Divas Championship in hand. And you gotta love the immunity. You gotta love the way some of these Divas will not be knocked down. They will be whacked in the face with a ladder and they will feel no pain. Going to be one of the longest matches of the night. You got those money in the bank ladder matches, how hard those can be to win for the guy that ends up winning them. And you think about the fact that we've got two, or oh, sorry, we've got uh, just two people short of a money in the bank ladder match here tonight. It's not that big of a difference. Divas champion leader not hesitating to go up and grab her championship. Ladder pulled out from underneath her. And that might have been the only thing stopping her just now from walking out with her championship. She is still hanging on. She can get it, though. And that fall can be really career shortening, depending on how you land. Layla now, the only one focused on the championship. Tiny shiny, back turn, doesn't realize. I think she's just now caught a glimpse of Layla grabbing one of the Divas Tubble. And oh, Layla just fell flat onto another ladder. You see how long Leader has been down from that fall. That just goes to show just how hard of a fall that was for the Divas Champion. Again, Lita now going up. She's going for a champ. Wait a minute. Lita, is this really a good... Oh, oh my god, no way. Layla, what a catch. Wow. I think we got a good taste of Layla's strength right there. Not to be underestimated. And there's the ladder. Mega, what, is this? what is this? Oh. Lita with a, a ladder wedged into the corner. I wonder if that will come into play at any point in this matchup. She's got her hands on a Divas Championship once again. And unfortunately, it looks like that's the end of the match. Okay, again, that... 
They just kind of end, don't they? They just kind of end. Well, Lita is still the Divas Champion. I know I say unfortunately, but I think it's very fortunate for her. I just would have liked to have seen a little more in this match. I think we saw a single finish and move in that one. Oh yeah, dramatic. For sure. Well, Lita is still your Divas Champion coming out of this one. As uh, up next, another championship is on the line. I mean, there's literally championships on the line throughout the rest of the night. And all I said another as if, like, there was going to be a non-title match somewhere in there. The leader is still the Divas Champion. And we'll see if the uh, title retentions can keep on coming. Because up next, Damian Sandow has got a very tough challenge ahead of him. A very motivated former United States Champion, Rey Mysterio, comes back from injury next. these people cheering These fans really recognizing greatness in front of them, I suppose. Damien Sandow, the intellectual savior, the current reigning United States champion, and the 2011 champion of champions. This man has got already quite a decorated career behind him. He is a former European champion, and he is the current SmackDown Money in the Bank briefcase holder. Yeah, I'd say uh, it's pretty good to be Sandow. But I think he knows it. This should be a real good match tonight between these two. And welcome back, Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio is back here tonight. I think a lot of people have missed this guy. But he is looking to become United States Champion for the second time. Ladder match, definitely something that I feel falls in the favor of Rey Mysterio. I've said before, I stand by that. But only time will tell. I'm not, gonna, I'm not exactly going to just jump on and say, hey, Rey's got this. Damian Sandow has a uh, track record. He's 1-0 in ladder matches right now. And that briefcase is a very friendly reminder of what Damian Sandow can accomplish in a ladder match. Of course, there isn't uh, quite as many people to outwit and kind of uh, pick his spot with. He's got to actually fight the good fight in this ladder match. And I think that's going to be the difference maker. I really need to change this Rey Mysterio thread. I always forget how it looks until I see it. This is this is not my best work. I don't know what I was thinking when I made it either, honestly. It's okay to criticize this one. Well, Rey going straight in with the strikes, and of course, let's not forget exactly how Rey Mysterio was injured and put on the shelf. Damien Sandow played Big Boss Man for a fool in that triple threat Hell in a, uh, Steel Cage match, sorry, at Hell in a Cell back in October. Damien Sandow befriending Damian Big Boss Man. The uh, they both qualified together by uh, cheating a contender's match and then signing the stipulation together. Sandow then let Big Boss Man do all the work on Rey Mysterio, occasionally helping Boss Man, only to then sneak out of the cage whilst Boss Man was making his slow ascent, knowing he was faster at climbing a wall than Boss Man was going to be. Really despicable stuff by Damien Sandow, but at the same time, you know, it goes to show the wit and the, the, the potential, the capabilities of Damien Sandow. 
And I don't think you're going to see ladders coming to play for quite a while on this one. This is going to be a very heated matchup. Rey Mysterio has got a lot of built-up anger inside of him right now that we're going to see unfold in that ring, I think. Damien Sandow experiencing first-hand the wrath of one of the smallest guys in the WWE. You know what they say, sizes and everything. Hit the halfway point on this fourth match. I feel like uh, this uh, pay-per-view is just flying by. Up next, the WWE Tag Team Championships are on the line. In TLC, as Ray comes flying off the ropes. And, oh, that was unfortunately quite the crash and burn. Rey Mysterio, former Intercontinental Champion, United States Champion, Cruiserweight Champion. Also known for spinning and landing on his butt. What a shot from the ladder. He's just lethal with that thing. Damien Sandow wasting no time here. Going straight up. US Championship in hand. And Rey Mysterio ascending the ladder. And now we got this fight going on on top of the ladder. Oh, right, right. Ooh, wow. Okay. All right, no, come on, Ray. There's no need for this. Not right now. Look, I have a lot of respect for Rey Mysterio, but don't milk it too much, buddy. Although that being said, I'm not going to lie. I've missed seeing this move. Oh, never mind. Didn't quite get the uh, space he needed for that. I guess if at first you don't succeed, eh? And the ladder. Ladder. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you? Hey, what's going on with you, buddy? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, I think I got WWE 13 again. I think I got WWE 13 again. Three more minutes. Three more game months of WB13 is all I got to endure. Oh, he's on the move again. You need to remember that. Three more game months. Mysterio, Mysterio chill out. Oh. Controlling the waist. I respect Rey Mysterio right now. I respect the frustrations that he's feeling and the ways in which he's, you know, trying to get that out of his system, but you don't want to hurt yourself in the process. And then Sandow now with the ladder in hand as he is walking into Rey Mysterio. Just, you know, contemplating the concept of forward motion right now as Damien Sandow. Fascinating little thing, and right jumping into the ring there. That was very creative, wasn't it? Comes off the top. Another big dive there by Mysterio. This one could be over already. He is definitely going to have to have those ribs looked at after this match. Damien Sandow seems to be uh, struggling a little bit right now. Right, right wedging a. Ladder into there as he's uh, mouthing and off he at Damien. He, like he wanted him to get back in the ring. Ray had a lot of chance there to win the United States Championship as Damien Sandow slowly walks around the ladder. Oh, wow. Got his hands on a ladder already. No, I guess he didn't like Ray Mysterio's idea too much. He's getting ready to <clears> use that ladder. United States Champion Damian Sandow and the boot connects with the abdomen. in a lot of trouble right now. What a drop kick. Another ladder. He's he seems to be up. almost confused here. here he goes again. Once again, we are up here on top of this ladder. And the fists exchange between these two. Oh, a big fist to the face of Mysterio. And down he goes. Sandow's got his hands on the United States Championship. Mysterio needs to recover. Desperately needs to get back to his feet. Damien Sandow. Wow. 
Wow. And that is exactly what I mean. Rey Mysterio came into this one, I think, a little bit too heated. He was too focused on trying to hurt Damian Sandow, and I think he actually cost himself this match in the process. You kind of ha hate to see it, but you got to respect the intellect of Damian Sandow. He was probably counting on the fact that Rey Mysterio would be this heated, that Rey Mysterio would have this much hate in his heart for Sandow, that he would come in you know, and burn himself out. And Sandow just picked his right spot there. I think he may have even ripped the mask of Rey Mysterio, which is what caused him to fall off of the ladder there. Damien Sandow has once again outwitted Rey Mysterio as we move towards our next match of the night. One of the most anticipated matches tonight. The WWE Tag Team Championship TLC match. of it, but uh, Edge and Christian personally requested that their original WWE Tag Team Championships, the ones that we saw since the Tag Titles Inception back in 2009, uh, also be hung above the ring here tonight as uh, they plan on pulling down their championships tonight. <clears throat> Quite a bold little move by the former champions. But of course, these guys are the longest reigning tag team champions in history and have a record of having defeated every single tag team they've fought. This should be a real interesting matchup. Edge and Christian, they've been dying for this rematch. <clears throat> I think a lot of people have been waiting to see this rematch. And TLC is exactly where Edge and Christian say they feel right at home. <clears throat> Should be a very good matchup. And that is what it is all about. The WWE Tag Team Championship. And as you can see there, referee holding both variations of the Tag Team Championship. It's a little, a little ridiculous on the part of uh, Edge and Christian, but then that's kind of, you know, the reputation those two have built for themselves right there, that championship. They they are a very historic team in SmackDown and WWE history in general. So here we go. Road Warriors are set to face off. Animal really sustained quite a bit of damage against Edge uh, this past uh, Friday on SmackDown. It's him Monday for some reason. As we get started, what has to be going on in the mind of Road Warrior Animal? Well, the good old JR. And that's the only downside to this matchup, as you notice Edge, exactly who he's targeted right off the bat, the man that he softened up. Rattling every fiber of his being. And this is going to return to the ring. Hey, he can't do this. Oh boy, Edge again. Going straight in for the kill. Grabbing that steel chair. Christian going, wasting no time here. Hello, Road Warriors. Oh Earth to Animal. Hawk wasting time grabbing a, uh, a table out from under the ring. I don't think that was worth doing just yet. And Christian almost won the tag team titles right there and then. That could have been the end of the Road Warriors career in a minute. <clears throat> Road Warrior Hawk, of course. Uh, Pretty much confirmed exactly what I said this past Friday on SmackDown in an interview. He said he uh, he walked away from that match this past Friday on SmackDown and he left Animal to lose simply because he knew Edge wasn't going to let up. 
because he knew Christian could be lurking around the corner and things would only get worse if he didn't just let Animal uh, take the loss there and then. He knew exactly what they were doing. He was softening him up ahead of tonight. And that is exactly what we're seeing in action right now. Edge and Christian really targeting Animal. Hawk almost being left to his own devices here. What, what is what is Hawk doing? We have got two tables set up in the ring. I don't really know what that's all about, but Edge. Oh, 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 oh my God! Edge. I don't even think he knew that was there. I don't think he ever had a chance to even spot that that was behind him. Well, Hawk inadvertently just set up what could very well be the down. Oh, never mind, he's up. <laughs> Two former world champions are Edge and Christian, let's not forget. Christian, the first ever Royal Rumble winner. Going to win the WWE Championship in the main event of WrestleMania, the first WrestleMania. Edge a former World Heavyweight Champion. I believe he won his, uh, like a month later? No, we won't talk about how Edge's reign went. It's not really fair on Edge. Look at this now. Uh, oh, you've already got tables, ladders, and chairs. Is there even a need to bring ring posts into the equation? Setting up that ladder in the corner. We saw Lita pull that move out earlier. Hawk now, caught up. What is that? Oh, no, what is this? Edge! Ooh! Edge just pursuing Road Warrior Hawk with that table in hand. The Road Warriors are not looking too hot in this match. table there, but Christian kind of moved it out of the way. That might have honestly been a favor. This is absolute mayhem. I can't really follow along with what's going on in this matchup right now. I just know that it ain't pretty. Edge has gone to the top of the ladder. He's got his hands on the WWE Tag Team Championship. And Hawk very wisely realized there wasn't a whole lot he could do in that situation, but ripped the ladder out from under him. And that could very well take Edge out of this match for quite some time. We've seen that fall from Lita earlier in the evening. We saw Christian take that exact same fall. And now look as Edge lays in the exact same lifeless motion that those other two did earlier in the night. Hawk is going up. The WWE Tag Team Championship is just out of reach. And he falls down. You hate to see that happen as Edge goes back up. Edge on the right side. Grabs the championship. I think Hawk may have just cost himself the tag team championships. He may have just missed the opportunity there and then. Oh, Edge losing his grip there. And unfortunately, this one is over. Animal doesn't even realize. This one is over. And just like that, so is the career of the Road Warriors. You don't think it will happen as suddenly as it does, but there it is. Now two-time WWE Tag Team Champions Christian and Edge have officially retired the Road Warriors, and I guess with that they are bringing their babies back as they celebrate with both Tag Team Championships in this one. Edge and Christian are once again 
at the top of the tag team now. family and just about everyone else around him has tried warning Yoshi Tatsu not to compete in tonight's matchup against Tensai, but it has already been signed, it has already been approved. This is going to be a real tough one for Yoshi Tatsu to overcome. Tensai suddenly set his sights on Yoshi Tatsu and the European Championship he has not elaborated what it is about Tatsu, what it is about the championship why he has made this decision. <clears throat> but this is a big deal right here. Because Tensai could very well be about to win his first championship in the WWE. The European title held by Yoshi Tatsu. Who, need I remind you, got a major upset victory over Sheamus to win that title in the first place. Something I imagine he holds quite dearly to him as a championship accomplishment. <clears throat> this is uh, this is a big one right here for sure. Just before our main event tonight for the World Heavyweight Championship, Brock Lesnar set to face off against Sheamus, a year-long awaited rematch. We got this one more match right here. Two complete polar opposites in terms of the presence they get off. And that's not me smack talk and Yoshi Tatsu, don't get me wrong. That's, uh, I'm just able to appreciate the difference in energy between these two. Tatsu absolutely got manhandled by Tensai just uh, eight days ago in the Superstars prior to yesterday's episode. I got a bad feel. Oh no! I got a bad feeling as far as championship matches go, this is not going to be a very long one. I respect Yoshi Tatsu for even accepting this challenge here tonight, but I'm I'm not expecting a miracle. However, it could happen. Fans still in kind of a hush after. Uh, Seeing the end the of uh, the the career. Oh, oh, the end of the Again, career of the Road Warriors moments ago. They want of the ring. Uh, behind the scenes, a very Yoshi a very Tatsu emotional moment handled. as they said farewell one he more time. Oh my God! And that is officially it. Edge and Christian have done what they set out to do, and once again, they are in a position now where they can say they have pretty much beaten every team that has come their way on SmackDown. Yoshi Tatsu hesitant to get in the ring, to say the least, and I don't honestly blame him. Tensai just watching on. Has the headlock. It's almost imposing more that Tensai was just kind of watching there. Like, he didn't even care that Yoshitatsu was taking his time to get in the ring. Ooh! I am nervous for the safety of Yoshitatsu in this match. You know when we get those right back matches and I kind of say I'm, I'm just hoping that he uh, he ends it quick? That's kind of the feeling I'm getting right now from Tensai in this one. Oh, oh! Oh, wow. Yes, the one thing a lot of people forget about Tensai is that this guy's not only, you know, he's not only packing that power, 
There's a lot of agility to him too. Tensai. What is he? Uh... Oh, the is on that oh, 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 no, 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 no. Ooh, wow, okay, that was extremely close to the table. Oh, boy. I don't think this is going to be... Uh... I said this uh, on SmackDown when he faced Gold Dust. I don't see how he could put Yoshitatsu through a table with this move, and I stand by that. I mean, he can, he can dizzy him, he can blind him, but he can't finish him with that. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Squeezing down on the head. It looks like Tensai has perhaps decided to end this. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Tatsu move. Tatsu move. Who? What? Excuse me? Tatsu has ascended. He killed the man. Tensai literally killed the man. He ascended. Well, I can't say it came as a surprise, and it's heartbreaking to see Tatsu's reign come to an end so quickly. But Tensai is the brand new European champion, and I'm going to tell you now, I wish everyone who tries to overcome this man the best of luck. Because I think we're in for a long European Championship reign right there. Pure dominance. And speaking of dominance, it's going to be interesting to see who is the more dominant in what is next. Our main event, Extreme Rules World Heavyweight Championship, one year in the making. Well, this is it. This is basically King of the Ring versus King of the Jungle. Brock Lesnar, an absolute monster. Sheamus, undeniably not that far off himself. We have got two of the best superstars to ever enter a ring in one matchup for the World Heavyweight Championship. Sheamus currently holds the record for the longest reign with that title that Brock Lesnar is wearing. It was Lesnar that ended that reign just uh, last year at this very event, TLC. There's a lot going on here. This one's a very big deal. And I'm very interested to see how it plays out. Sheamus went through a lot to get to this point, and I think he really got the last laugh on Brock Lesnar this past Friday on SmackDown after Lesnar defeated Drew McIntyre. Sheamus really did everything he could to try and help his buddy get a victory over Lesnar, but uh, in the end, Lesnar was still victorious. But Sheamus came striking with that steel pole, and in an Extreme Rules match, that steel pole is perfectly legal. Anything these guys want to use at all is perfectly legal. Neither of these two particularly too popular with the fans, but I don't think anyone can deny the talent that is in this ring right now. Introducing the challenger from Dublin, Ireland, weighing 272 pounds, the Celtic warrior, Shima. And his opponent, from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing 295 pounds, he is the World Heavyweight Champion, Brock Lesnar. Oh, 
I mean, we've got the rest of the show for this match. I think tonight's show has uh, really flown by. As I said before, those uh, ladder matches and table matches do end, tend to end a little, a little quickly. And that means these guys have got a lot of time to work with. And they got a lot to take out on each other in this matchup. So here we go. There's Brock Lesnar and Sheamus. The bell has been rung. 20 minutes three. on the limit. It no DQ. Over. Anything goes. Falls count anywhere. And Sheamus wasting no time taking control of the World Heavyweight Champion. I say after Sheamus dropped the World Heavyweight Championship to Brock Lesnar back at a TLC last year, I don't believe he ever got a rematch for the World Heavyweight title. King, this Sheamus is just flat out mean. Yeah, I've never seen anyone who enjoys... Cover attempt on the outside, and that's exactly what I mean. This match can end anywhere at any given time. And I have a feeling it will, much like the rest of TLC. Oh, boy. Okay, well, that's one way to quickly presume control of the match. I don't expect anything. I mean, you see there, Brock Lesnar with a low blow. Again, perfectly legal. Anything you want to do, you can do in this match. This match can get very inhumane very fast when it involves these two. Sheamus, no doubt, the first to use the uh, weapon in this match. Admittedly, Brock Lesnar brought it into the ring, but uh, I'm not surprised to see Sheamus go all out. They had a very short-lived match uh, last year at TLC after uh, Sheamus had already captured the European Championship earlier in the night. Uh, he then had to defend his title in a bonus match that happened later on in the night, whereas here tonight this is Sheamus' only match. So this, there is a huge difference here. However, Brock Lesnar has really grown as an individual in the last year. He was still a very fresh face when he won his first World of Weight Championship from Sheamus. Now in his second reign, Let's not forget, he defeated Kane to capture that championship. A stiff axe handle. What a match this is going to be. He's in a bad spot here. Kane is sitting Brock Lesnar up on the top. What is he? What is he looking to do here? I mean, that's the thing. This is going to be pound for pound. Just a heavy hit matchup. Don't expect a lot of submission holds attempted. I mean, maybe a Kimura lock. That is a perfectly legal move in this match. It has not been banned tonight. Anything goes. Lesnar's in trouble. How do you even call a move like that? Uh, I believe that is a this is one uh, I'm Mr. Kennedy. <laughs> so that's simply Mr. Championship on the line. Sheamus kicked him in the head there as he was getting something out from under there. Referee clearly having a bit of a hard time keeping up with these two as they both enter and exit the ring repeatedly. And that series ends in deadlock. Neither one of these superstars can afford to give their opponent the upper hand. And that's the thing, you see a fan there, he was holding out his championship belt. If Sheamus wanted to go out there and grab it, he could. Everything is legal in this arena right now. You got a buddy in the crowd that wants to hand you something you snuck into the arena. That's uh, that's very legal. And that's scary. You never know what what the hell is going to happen. Oh, oh, fist meets chair and fist wins. That does come as a surprise. Nice combo there, my Sheamus. I felt really, really fluid. Sheamus going under the ring. Not liking how close these guys are staying at the announce table. And Brock Lesnar, look at this! What strength to put him in this torture rack submission hold. You think about the weight and the size of Sheamus, and then you imagine holding him over your shoulders like Brock Lesnar is right now. I don't think most people could do that. That's a wrestle there by Sheamus. And Sheamus really going to the under the underneath the ring. And I believe that was a ladder. A little bit of TLC in this match, too. Oh, boy. 
Not this area. <laughs> Let's stay away from that area. Oh my gosh! Seamus. You don't want to be on the receiving end of one of Seamus' shots. Oops. Everything with cruel intention. Seamus has the Seamus. Throwing him into the crowd. Wait, what is this one's drink? Or Seamus, what are you doing? Oh! What is this? Seamus! What are you doing? Spitting drink on the fans? There's no need for that. I've got to say, bro. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Careful there. There are fans literally right in front of them. I gotta give Seamus a lot of credit. He is really handling Brock Lesnar right now. And Brock Lesnar getting thrown into the crowd. Yeah, the World Heavyweight Champion is in a lot of trouble right now. Seamus, Irish Cush backbreaker. Going for the cover here on the outside on Lesnar, and he manages to kick out at one. Oh. Sheamus is, he's, I mean, he's doing it. I'll give him credit. He is doing it. Sheamus got a table in hand there. It's nice to with a trash can. And down goes the referee. Okay, he's back up. That's good to see. Doesn't often survive things very well, so I'm happy to see he's doing okay. <laughs> oh no, his focus is turned to the announce table. He's picked up a table. Seamus squeezing. Oh, and Seamus just seem to be a uh, ooh a almost into that trash can. That would have been like devastating to say the least. Seamus now set up a table in front of the announce table. I have a bad feeling he is he's planning something uh, vicious there. The Oh boy, no, 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 no. Seamus. Seamus could literally end Lesnar's career with this one. Oh my god. This is the most in danger Lesnar has ever looked. And he's still kicking out at one. Seamus throwing Lesnar around like a rag doll. Got him through another table. We are literally seeing the former World Heavyweight Champion Seamus come out tonight. Brock Lesnar has never been this tamed before. That King of the Ring victory has really awoken something in Sheamus. Takes Lesnar into the ring, goes for the cover. I guess he wants to finish it in the ring. He hasn't done nearly enough to get the pin yet. The championship hangs in the balance. Lesnar catches Sheamus belly to belly. And then Brock Lesnar gonna try and fight his way back into this matchup after taking punishment. Slamming Sheamus down with a spine buster. We're almost 10 minutes deep into this match. And I don't feel like we've gotten any closer to a winner for the longest time. I really felt like Sheamus had gotten this match in the palm of his hands there. It seems like the moment it went back into the ring, the favor switched over to Lesnar. Almost like all of those weapon shots, everything he was doing there, all that physical damage, it was it meant nothing. Lesnar now trying to just tear Sheamus limb from limb. Cannot believe that Brock Lesnar is still able to fight in this matchup, despite the fact that Sheamus has literally thrown him high cross style through a table, and then belly to belly him through another table right afterwards. Need I remind you? And now Lesnar with these repeated power bombs. Seamus able to kick out at one. Oh, kick to the midsection. And the knuckles connect. 
Brock Lesnar once again getting manhandled by Sheamus here. For the second time in this match, Sheamus is going for a ladder. We've already seen uh, tables and chairs come into play here. It seems like Sheamus uh, really wants to give us the, you know, what was advertised. What's this? Lesnar's legs. Oh my god, he just broke the ladder with Lesnar's boot. How much force did he bring him down with? And Lesnar is still able to kick out. That's the thing you've really got to take into, uh, well, commit to your memory to, 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 to accept and take in. Sorry, not getting my words out very smoothly here. Lesnar is still fighting. Oh my god. No way. No way. Oh my god. We have seen so many arms get broken this way. Sheamus is in a world of trouble right now. <clears throat> I don't think anyone has ever survived a Kimura lock. Brock Lesnar fighting with Sheamus to snap the arm. You can kind of see Sheamus showing a little bit of resistance here. A little bit more than we're used to from anyone who's ever been locked in the Kimura lock before. This has gone on for quite a while here. Remember, wrestling's not gay. It's very straight. This is very, very heterosexual what you're looking at right here. Just two, two bros. <laughs> hugging out, hugging out. Countered by Sheamus. Oh, I think, Sheamus, oh my gosh, Sheamus actually rolled out. Sheamus celebrating the fact that he escaped the Kimura lock. <laughs> I don't think it matters. I guess Brock Lesnar. Oh, wow. What a move by Lesnar. On the arm that he just took. And now. Oh, my God. As if one wasn't enough. Brock Lesnar going in for a second stretch on the arm. You notice how both arms are being wrenched back in this submission hold. It really is a helpless situation for this former World Heavyweight Champion, the King of the Ring, having both of his arms work at once here, really leaving uh, both arms right for the pick and for Brock Lesnar. And once again, once again, Brock Lesnar with the triple power bombs. These two really trying to close out the year in explosive style. What a match. The are down. Sheamus kicked out. Look at those eyes. Oh, yeah, this, this could, be, could be the beginning of the end for Sheamus. Brock Lesnar. Again? Oh my god. The second time. Excuse me, sorry. A second time, Brock Lesnar is locked in this Kimura lock. Oh my god. Can Sheamus seriously hang in twice? This has broken the arm of Kane, Undertaker, Triple H. So many. So many individuals have seen serious injury time from the Kimura lock. Sheamus refuses to tap out, and enough is enough. Enough is enough. It looks like Lesnar didn't manage to snap the arm, but Sheamus, realizing he was in a helpless situation, decided to tap out. My god, what a showing from Sheamus, though. Here is your winner and still world heavyweight champion, Brock History has a way of repeating itself. And for the second year in a row, it looks like Brock Lesnar is closing out the year with the World Heavyweight Championship. And it's starting to really beg the question, who is going to be able to defeat Brock Lesnar? Who is going to be able to be the next World Heavyweight Champion in this prestigious lineage of champions? Brock Lesnar has once again proven that he is superior to the longest champion in history, Sheamus. And with Royal Rumble around the corner, a new year could bring new challenges for Brock Lesnar. But in the meantime, he is still your World of Weight Champion. I thank you all for joining me here for TLC tonight. I know this was a little bit of a short pay-per-view, but it was, uh, you know, 
it was a great one nonetheless. I feel this main event really topped off this year. And uh, this will be the final pay-per-view for 2011. We still have a few more episodes of Sm uh, SmackDown Raw and Superstars. And I will see you tonight for another episode of Raw.